If you look very carefully at this picture, you may detect an air of expectancy. Not an obvious one, mind you. It will be considered quite unseemly in this mining area of northwest Durham to show any undue excitement about anything. But round behind the colliery houses, over the garden fences, in kitchens and sculleries from Edmondsley to Craghead, hearts are beating faster today than on any other day of the year. All this anticipation and suspense is centred round one building, the local pub, because it's here tonight they'll be holding the annual village leak show. It's the sort of event that in any other part of the country would be unlikely to raise even a ripple of interest among the vast majority of the population. But in Durham, it's Derby Day, Cup Final and the Ashes all rolled into one. Here, the show leak, a giant mutation of the little thing most people make soup out of, is not so much a vegetable, it's more a sacred symbol. The leak trench, a few square feet of hallowed soil, is tended as lovingly and guarded as closely as the wicket at Lord's. What a leak man puts into his trench to make his leaks grow so big is a mystery no outsider has ever been able to solve. But sometimes it's whispered in the ears of naughty children to frighten them into obedience. Today, it's Edmondsley's turn. With over a thousand pounds in prize money at stake, men like Dennis Curtin, last year's champion, keeps his fingers crossed that God and the diabolical brew he's fed his leeks on have been good to him. Nickel Robson's come through the trials and tribulations of growing, feeling that this year he could have a chance. But lifting them's always a nerve-wracking affair. A blemish or a split at this stage would be enough to bring on cardiac arrest. But they're good. Sid Bunn's a retired miner who cut his teeth on leak law. The ritual's all important to Sid, like insisting that all competitors grow their leeks themselves in their own gardens, and stamping the leaves while they're still in the trenches weeks before the competition. The most important ritual of all, though, to Sid is lifting them. You know what this one's going to be like? He's bruised now. Eh? What do you think, no good? Why, <laughs> I don't know whether they'll not get it far. They'll not be last. They'll not be last, they'll not get very far. Yeah, yeah. Sid, what do you put in your trench? Why, I'll be letting a secret suit, you know, a lot of, for a lot of the boys. <laughs> but you can buy plenty of fertilizers nowadays and do the job. Why should there be any secret about it? Well, I don't know. Sometimes man gets a hold, hold of somewhat what makes him groan, he'll not tell nobody else. <laughs> There's some queer old timers, you know, knocking about. I'm not one of them, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no. What sorts of things? Come on, uh, Sid, what kind of well, things do they put in? I mean, I mean well, they, they good, always make this big mystery of it. No, good, good garden manure is your main ingredient, like I reckon. <laughs> I've heard them putting cow's blood and... Sheep's droppings and... Oh, aye, aye, I've got a tank in that old shed there with where the old pork's rotted. Plenty of old sheep muck in. You leave him in in 12 months, you know, it comes out like green tea. And then you put your feeders in, you know. One of them in, and give them a drink. Really? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> After all that said, you're not going to tell me that you would eat them? No, he did, yeah. Well, here it is. The Holy of Holies, the cramped little room that tonight will become the nerve center for so many hopes and ambitions. This is the judging room, where the wise men who perform that onerous task will be closeted incommunicado for as long as it takes them to decide who'll wear this year's crown. The leaks arrive to be judged, benching them is the correct term. A tense moment, this, but Nickel looks fairly calm as he presents his pair. Sid looks as though he's got nothing to fear, but he's having a crafty look at the competition just the same. The show is more exciting than ever this year because for the first time in its history, women have been allowed to compete. Not that anybody seriously expects a woman to win, but in leaks, you can't afford to be complacent. Not even when you're the reigning champion. At last, the moment of reckoning. Joe Edwards and his brother-in-law, Dick Edridge, have been invited to judge because they come from the next village and can be expected to be impartial. Besides, there aren't many judges as alive to all the dodges as Joe. 
It's in moments like this you realise there's more to it all than just a bit of fun. One prominent grower died last week, but his fellow members passed a resolution to the effect that his leaks could be shown posthumously. Another member, living apart from his wife, sent his mate round to the house this morning to demand that she hand over his leaks. She did, and they're here. Is there much fiddling? Oh, on yes, there's a lot of fiddling. There's some places, you know. The club union one time, about 1963, there was leaks in there about 16 round. But when they measured them, you know, when people felt them, they were rotten inside. So they made a sheet out now, club union rules. Any damage leaks, interfering leaks, uh, leaks being tampered on with, the rushed and all that, you can take points off them. But How the most points, the most points you can take off a man is 25 points. How can you interfere with a leak, Joe? Oh, well, wow, that's a secret. Well, this is it. After all the loving care and bitter argument, the deviousness and devotion, the crunch has come. The judge has done his bit, now it's up to the committee men to be the first to learn the identity of the winner. Even the judge doesn't know. He was working purely on numbers. Name and number are cross-checked and... No! Surely not! It can't be! That is for us, isn't it? It is for us. There's no mistake, Mr. It'll be a great lift for uh, operation there. Phyllis has won, has she? Yes. Yeah. Phyllis, right. It's P. Well, it's P. You're right, it's Phyllis, right. I don't know how well, you The lady has broken in and won. What are you Ah, well, there's nothing for it but to grit one's teeth and make the stunning announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time we've had women members in this league show, and we've got a lady winner, Mrs. Phyllis Wright. Where are you, Booker? <laughs>